To have a machine of the capabilities that we have here where you really can accelerate just about anything on the periodic table up to fairly high energies or fractions of the speed of light that are significant really lets us do a lot of first-rate science. We spend many hours each year here at the Cyclotron Institute using particle beams to test devices that companies are building. Particle beams are used uh, to produce electronics. Uh, they're used to make products, uh, lots, lots of things. In fact, without the research that's being done and has been done in nuclear physics, we wouldn't be living in the uh, technology age that we're living in. The Cyclotron Institute, you know, it's one of the jewels in, the, in Texas A&M's crown. It has been part of a tremendous uh, growth in uh, both the size and reputation of, of this university. The idea of having a cyclotron here was pushed by Glenn Seaborg, who's a Nobel Prize winner in uh, nuclear chemistry. It was a joint effort between the Robert A. Welch Foundation that thought that we should have a cyclotron to investigate the chemistry of, of the elements and um, the Atomic Energy Commission, which was the forerunner of the Department of Energy, and the state of Texas and Texas A&M all came together. That confluence of things, I think, somehow led to the idea that maybe A&M could build a cyclotron. That, that was the, the, the main impetus, I think. Our research since about 1972 <laughs> has received really great reviews, and that's what's kept us going. But you also have to appreciate all the people. Realize the contributions they make, that sort of thing. And I think that's a very important aspect of it. We've managed to build a lot of our own equipment, design a lot of our own stuff. So we've had good people here that's, you know, that's been able to carry that through. So it's always been an interesting uh, type work here. It's always been different. It's always been exciting. It's been a pretty, pretty good ride. <laughs> I was a graduate student in uh, Birmingham University in England. I came 1978. We had a um, uh, very nice group. I think the atmosphere is, is just like the day I came. Very friendly and people very anxious to, 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 to do things. And, and, and uh, we have actually idea running around all the time and nobody seems to actually kind of slow down anything anyway. <laughs> so this is a nice thing. They have made so many strides in research. I'm so happy for them. I really am. So I think it's very important for Texas A&M, for the state, to have a facility like this. Basically, it was a uh, a uh, keystone for helping upgrade the, the overall research reputation of the university. It's now a, a, a leading research facility in the United States, or in the world, really. We're doing stuff that's new and innovative and uh, interesting, and there's really not too many things that you can think of that you can't get an answer for here out of somebody. The future looks good for us here. And the Institute has played a very strong role for now 50 years as a research entity. We're not the only research uh, effort uh, on campus anymore, but we started out as one of the only major research efforts, and we had that position for quite a few years. I think if we look back at it, we would, we would say that we, uh, we anchored a lot of the other activities that uh, came along at Texas A&M. That's the sort of thing to me that's, that's really relevant and important. I, I would say that's the legacy. There has been a uh, thinning out of nuclear research facilities in the country, and that has just made us more important. It's what we like to call a survivor. Getting a cyclotron like ours, people didn't think we'd be able to do it and yet it was just by sheer determination and Texas we, we can do it kind of attitude that they said we can build one here. <laughs>